Welcome everyone to the third and probably final Perception vs. Reality Episode 3 This time we are farming on Jungle Valley of all places Target farming God Touched Rares High value premium God Touched Rares primarily Currency based God Touched Rares Legion will be a big part of the strategy as in my Testing, I have found Legion to be the single greatest source of God Touched Rares. As you can see, I am selling 10 full Legion sets for 5 Divines, which is a price point of 0 0.5 Divines per Legion set. Why did I do that? Why did I show you that? Well, because I am going to be counting Legion sets in full at 0 0.5 Divines apiece. Last video I made, I was also farming Legion, but it wasn't like super, super deep into Legion. And I just went ahead and let Excellence count uh, what I had in the end. And it was actually woefully underpriced. In fact, it didn't even see all the Legion emblems, which was kind of weird. Uh, so this time I will be pulling them out aside and showing them to you. And pricing them at 0 0.5 Divines apiece. However many full sets of Legions I have and then the remainder... I will leave an excellence. Hopefully it will be able to tally those results properly. You can see the Atlas Passive Tree for today's video is focused, uh, once again, not on Wandering Path or Grand Design. Uh, this one is extremely heavy on the Legion. Basically every single relevant Legion node is taken. We have all the increased effect of modifiers, non-unique maps, all of the quantity wheel, rarity wheel, because we're hunting god touch rares we're going to need some magic find this time so major disclaimer for this video unlike in the mesa video that was all about how can go and unlike in the crimson temple video which was all about strong box divination card farming this farm in particular does seem to be a bit more on the aspirational side meaning you need to have a both a strong character and to also have a sizable amount of magic find uh, attributes on your character, which is, of course, quantity, increased quantity, and rarity on gear. Incidentally, uh, you can check the POB to see all of my gear. This ca uh, this character has been coming together quite well. We're about one month into the league, and right now in combat, I have I should have 61% increased quantity and 259% increased rarity. By no means is that the maximum threshold you can have, but there are very different various different uh, gradients of magic find strength of character you can have you can have an extremely strong character with no magic find not terribly difficult to achieve you can have an extremely weak character with maximum magic find and that's also uh, something you can do you know I, I don't really like going with either one of the major extremes last league i had a character that has 65 percent increased quantity and no rarity because rarity wasn't very valuable this time i've had to pull a few strings make a few more sacrifices character is not quite as strong uh, from a strength perspective headhunter was nerfed a little bit more as well and consequently i am a bit weaker but i have managed to get in quite a bit of rarity for these new god touched rare farming there is a perception that still exists i think that uh, god touched rare farming outside of group mfing crazy group magic fine calling calling in the caller from tft outside of those sources that uh, this is something that essentially cannot earn currency certainly not uh, loads of currency uh, regardless of the sort of level that you're playing at and once again uh, as the third video in this series I'm going to hopefully dispel that assertion uh, by the way I do think that Al can go people have definitely come around now <laughs> for like a full month into the league uh, people are seeing that Al can go is actually quite lucrative in fact it's uh, by virtue of juicing being nerfed in many ways, Al can go is be in a better place than it's ever been. And also, people I think have started to come around with the strong box uh, farming thing. I, I I would like to take a little bit of credit on that one, especially uh, the strong box divination card farming fell way under the radar. Uh, I definitely brought it to light, and I mean we saw the investment costs of those types of materials go up pretty hard. So I think. I might have had something to do with that. Apologies for that, but that is just the repercussions of uh, the fact that it was one of the premier great currency earning strategies that still existed, that didn't seem to be nerfed too hard, and unique to this league, also didn't really seem to require much magic find gear. So 
a terrific strategy to do for anyone who is still in the process of trying to build up a character has a fairly strong character but hasn't really hit that transition of going into magic find now if you are in that transition time period you are getting all of that magic find going on in your character this is a strategy you're probably going to want to see incidentally i did a test run 32 maps last night anyone who was on the live stream for that well they got the show of their life because the results were so astoundingly good <laughs> that I'm actually a little bit disturbed uh, now having a, and a little bit anxious at the, making this video because I found 81 divine orbs in 32 maps with an investment cost of something like 40 chaos per map. In other words, it was, it was like a nine to one ratio investment to profit <laughs> per map. I was having to spend a little bit of extra time in each map because I was putting a lot of things on the map. But for me, I mean, even, even still, it was around seven minutes per map. Uh, counting the hideout time, which is pretty crazy. Uh, so it was just insane currency per hour. I'm not even going to tell you what the currency per hour actually was because it's just offensive, basically. Unethical amount of currency I made in the test run. Uh, the highlight reel uh, is, is a video that came out right before this one on YouTube. So you check out that highlight reel, you know exactly what I was talking about. Uh, let's get into the strategy here. We're going to go Legion, deep on the Legion. I am going to use... Uh, gilded Legion Scarabs. We'll explain that in a minute. Uh, still going Shrines because I used a Gaul Shrine. Even though Shrines is not like a big part of the strategy. I like having them. There's at least one Shrine on every map. Delirium Mirror. Um, Going to be making a lot of extra currency through Simulacrum Splinter Rewards and Delirium Orb Reward. A lot of players have shifted away from Delirium Mirror Farming into Delirium Orb Farming. Consequently, Delirium Mirror Farming, the value of it, the amount of currency you can make from it, has gone up. Why? Well, well, for one thing, because when people do Delhi Orb Farming for a major currency, they're not picking up individual splinters. It's not worth a click. But it is worth a click when you're getting somewhere around 100 or so Simulacrum Splinters in one pile, which is what will be happening on this farm. You see, I even have some points in Beyond. So uh, Beyond is actually going to be a part of the strategy, uh, and it is essentially the third and final League mechanic that will be netting a decent amount of currency back through its League-specific rewards. So Legion... Delirium and beyond are all going to be giving me currency back as a sort of backup in case my RNG really falls flat on this test. I should still do all right. So the other thing here is a little bit of extra juice on breach only costs three points and six points invested in abyss for a little bit of extra juice there blocking everything on this side. There would only be two things to block on the left. So it's not really even worth going over there. And the few remaining points put in the man in the guaranteed strong box. Since we are blocking, strong box has a decent chance. Ambush has a decent chance of spawning naturally on the map, which will give me not one but five strong boxes. Uh, Domination also has a decent chance of spawning, which I believe will be an extra four shrines, which will make that goal nice and pretty. And here's a something I don't usually take: protracted battle. Now we're doing jungle valley. It actually gets kind of deep on the fog, and this is really helpful to guarantee that I unlock all of the legion monsters in stasis. Here's a tip for you: uh, if you, first of all, you have to have a pretty strong character to even unlock all the monsters in stasis. Uh, but even still, I think this is a good idea to take this because if you get a god touched rare in stasis. It takes a lot of extra damage to unlock it. So you really want to guarantee that you are unlocking every single monster in the stasis. Otherwise, who knows what you're missing out. In fact, I suspect kind of what's going on here with a lot of players not really necessarily believing that Legion is, is the, the be-all, end-all winner above all other league mechanics for this. A lot of players probably aren't necessarily unlocking 100% of their Legions. Especially the God Touch Rares in there that have two or three times as much life uh, as the other stasis monsters. And when that happens, said player doesn't even know that they missed a God Touch Rare in that case. So that's probably something that's happening to a lot of players under their own radar. And that is one big reason why I find so, so many God Touch Rares from Legions. Because I almost always unlock the entire Legion. Breach is kind of okay. Abyss is pretty good, actually. Uh, and Strong Box, for once, <laughs> is not on my Atlas in a major way. No 500% quantity Strong Box sextant going on here. Uh, for once, we're not farming Divination cards because it's going really hard into the Delirium uh, and uh, God Touch Rare farming. So we are putting a Delirium Mirror on every single map. This is 50 Chaos per. It is 
the price of these is on its way down actually uh you can even get these for 45 chaos a piece or less uh one legion encounter this has been fluctuating i priced these at 35 chaos a piece it's kind of gone up kind of gone down it seems to be holding around 30 35 chaos they are 35 chaos a piece for the sake of this video abyss sextants very cheap uh they have been going up a little bit recently they were priced at 12 chaos a piece Probably a week ago you could get them at 4 Chaos Apiece, but 12 Chaos Apiece right now. That's just plus 1 Abyss. That's not even like a huge deal. Then Beyond. Beyond also about 12 Chaos Apiece. Uh, a lot of people still don't believe in it very much. I do have 8, eight Mod Corrupted uh, sections here as well to help me sustain and get the rest of these 100 maps filled out. For these are all 8 Mod Corrupted maps, as usual. They are 60 Chaos Apiece. And they've only ever really been that high. At the very end, we have a nice uh, little cute thing that I did on Colonnade on a recent video. 25% increased pack size. You unidentified maps as Sextant's dirt cheap. 20 chaos for this Sextant here. And I have 16 unidentified maps that when I was rolling my own maps, I rolled them all up to 85% quantity or and or 25% pack size before I vowed them in case they turned unidentified. They could still be quite the premium map in the event that I use the sextant and subbing this out for beyond I think is not going to be too bad not too bad of a choice some of the maps in here are beyond and they will be used while I'm using the 8 mod corrupted sextant so it makes it feel like I'm d I didn't even short stack myself in any way Gilded Reliquary Scarab is, is the big addition kind of think of this I think of this strategy as substituting divination card farming for god touched farming I am not using a divination scarab so I'm using a Gilded Reliquary Scarab in case you're not aware of what this does um, I, I don't have the exact line that chris wilson said but he said uh, a while back that the way the conversions work with arch nemesis monsters they convert into uniques and if they convert i believe one more time or in some cases maybe that's all it has to do anyway uh basically you're trying to push into each monster as many uniques as you can and they get transformed into whatever specific god touched items they are whether it's flasks fractured items currencies scarabs all that stuff and in the event that you get a Solaris, Lunaris, or Shikara, or something like that. I can't remember the last one. Those are the currency-touched ones. And then Innocence is also a premium one. Drops a lot of Scarabs, Wing Scarabs. But uh, at any rate, this is a very valuable Scarab. It is a little bit expensive now. I suspect it's going to go up over time. We have a Breach Scarab. Probably the cheapest Scarab on here. Because Breach, is, out, out of all the League mechanics I'm putting on here, Breach is kind of the weakest one. But it's still pretty good. It, it adds three Breaches to the map on the Jungle Valley. Not too bad. I, can't, I couldn't really think of a, a better option, especially for only three points on the Atlas Passive to make it fairly juicy. Legion, of course, is on here. And then Abyss. Abyss to get as many monsters as you can get on there. We're juicing Abyss a bit. So again, Breach and Abyss are the two League mechanics that we're using that I don't even care about their League-specific rewards. Not going for them whatsoever. So this is absolutely a juicing strategy. 17 and a half Divine Orbs to cover the cost of the Sextants. And that means... I take you down to Excellence, which I forgot to open. Hang tie here, we'll get Excellence opened. Gotta figure out our investment. Everything should be in working order here. Let me go ahead and reset. Oh my goodness, a lot of stuff there. Okay, there we got 5,939 chaos. I am going to count div uh, divine orbs at 210 chaos per. They keep going up, and there's no better time to do this farm because this farm is the most liquidable currency you can possibly be on, on the hunt for pure raw divine orbs. And given that raw divine orbs are just on their way up, they show no sign of slowing down or stopping. I think this is a terrific time to get in on this. So you can see that the divine orbs are in here, the scarabs are in here. Uh, this isn't really bulk pricing, but I'm going to be getting a lot of scarabs back that will also not be counted at bulk pricing. And there's a lot of things that are not going to be counted in excellence, like some of the emblems, like well, any blueprints or anything like that that drop. Uh, logbooks may also drop as well because I'm not actually not blocking expedition. But you can see 28.28, 2828 uh, is the investment cost. We will see after 100 maps what the gross is. I think this is a quite a variable strategy, a lot of RNG involved, but again... 259% increased rarity, 61% uh, increased quantity. I'm giving my chance as much as I can, around seven minutes per map. We're gonna see what kind of currency I walk away with. And if it's anything like that test run, it is going to be the most lucrative strategy I've come out with all year.
very much looking forward to the results. And as far as the viewers on the live stream, well, they are more entertained with this strategy than any other, I can assure you that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Come join along in the live stream next time. I will probably be focusing a lot on God Touched Rare Farming, since it is, as I mentioned, the most aspirational content I'm this league, I think. If I'm not mistaken there. So we got all of these scarabs in. We're going to be using... Now, I could have gone Fortune Favors the Brave. It's not a bad choice. But I am really a big believer in the legions. More legions, the better. I want three or four legions on every single map. We're going to start with this crazy juicy map. 48% pack size. Holy cow. Uh, we're going to go straight into legion. Okay. And we're doing Eater of Worlds because focus on the altars. Incidentally, uh, Wandering Path is a decent strategy for this, although with Breach, you probably wouldn't use Breach for it. And you would not be necessarily using Eater of Worlds, so you get a higher pack size and more influence monsters, less chance to spawn the altars. The altars are a big deal. The reason why... I could be putting in ANR, wouldn't be a bad idea, but ANR calls the enemy, so I don't get any credit for uh, quantity or rarity on gear if he makes a kill. So, yeah, that's uh, something a lot of people aren't aware of. But that's how that works. So I got a timer. I'm going to start this timer. We're going to get into map number one. And I'll do a little bit of talking on the way. Show you what I'm doing. So Grimrow recently came out with a video. Detailing that jungle. This jungle map was a little bit unique. In that the altars cannot spawn with boss modifiers on them. As you can see there's no boss mods on that altar. I got, I got a scary map here apparently. This map was a doozy. I, I may have to review the uh, the mods on it here. Just need a few headhunter buffs. Maybe get the get the ball rolling a little bit. Harvest is in here. I'm not going to do harvest. I'm going to do the one legion. I do whatever league mechanic is kind of up front that I can sort of jump start, freeze the mirror because I'm about to go deep into the mirror because I do want to unlock as many of the altars as I can. See, we got America uh, legion there. I want to unlock all of the altars that I can before I really, you know, dive in and do all the league mechanics. So you can see the entire legion was unlocked there. I got the Scourge boss already spawned. He's going to spawn pretty early a lot of the time. You can see he's going to die pretty quick too to the character that I have here. That was America boss. Died on phase one. I swing back, kill him in phase two. And he's gone. Okay. Yes, and the this map, uh, one of the dangerous or difficult parts of this map is monsters have a whole bunch of increased health, the uh, energy shield. So these are actually tankier than average monsters. You can see that I actually already got my first uh, God Touched monster. There's a Kitava Touched here. He drops all the uniques. Now I must have gotten some sort of bad conversion because I didn't actually see any loot. My loot filter is quite tight. Oh, there's the loot. Okay, so it converted over into jewelry, apparently. Um, that's a pretty bad fortune because it can't really give me better tier <laughs> or lower tier jewelries very easily. So I didn't get anything very good out of that one. And, uh, you know, Kitava Touch is still kind of a premium uh, one. I mean, you, you saw in the Colonnade map, I had a Kitava Touch that dropped an Aegis or a Shavs and a Soul Taker in one drop. So, I mean, it can be incredible, but quite often gets, you know, gobbed down by the, uh, the bad conversion. As far as altars, I'm primarily looking for increased quantity and rarity, uh, as well as duplicated currency. <laughs> this would be a really good one. Uh, not duplicated divination cards. I don't care at all about that for this farm. All right, you can see how the map layout here. There is a boss in this room, but it, it's unspawned. So that's why the altars are the way they are. Now, a lot of people are, are running this with like 60, 80, or even 100% Delhi orbs. You know, that's probably not a bad idea, but that strategy doesn't allow you... Um, to get the simulacrum splinters easily. It doesn't allow you to get any any um, delirium orbs. Yeah, you can see some pretty good results there. The, the time America emblem. I got a tainted mythic orb, which is worth something. League-specific rewards coming at my way, right? So this is kind of backup, even though uh, the map's investment costs whatever it costs. I can still make pretty good currency on on the back end and of course we'll be speaking of the back end of definitely leveling some awakened enlightened supports 
<laughs> as well as empower support and a few uh, awaken enhance supports. I had, I had an extraordinary gambling session last time from the Promenade Farm. Definitely hoping to repeat that with some even higher stakes. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm due for some very bad RNG though. After you know, just keep getting great RNG. Seems like all league long. Um, not sure why, but I'll just keep playing the game the way I play it and let it keep coming to me. I guess. This character has a lot of freeze built into it, still running Fury of Nature. You can see that Legion bosses get straight up frozen. Hard frozen in most cases. Um, that's not something a lot of builds can do. A lot of people are not going to want to run the Legion bosses version of it. <laughs> Consequently, I, I'm pretty sure actually polished Legion scarabs are even more expensive than gilded Legion scarabs, which is just kind of really wacky. And it's because people actively do not want to see Legion bosses spawn in their Legion. Uh, because they can't handle it. Because they're running a magic fine character that can't handle uh, killing the bosses. And so I get to take the, I get to take advantage of that fact because mine can. Not only can it, it can, but I can even go full deep into Legion specific rewards and get a whole bunch of extra splinters from Legion bosses without it being too much problem. Plus, on a side note, I feel like Legion bo when Legion bosses spawn, they actually have additional rare monsters near them. Now, I, I have no data to back up on, to back me up on that. But that's what it feels like. Like there's more lieutenants, maybe. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. So if somebody knows, uh, please let, please uh, express how that works in the comments down below. I'd be, I'm really curious to see if uh, maybe when you spawn a legion, if, if it spawns with bosses, it, it sort of guarantees a certain amount of rares on there, the high end, so to speak. So there's the boss. The, this map's basically done now. I don't really think there's anything left to do. Uh, so we got a Kitava Touched. Might have gotten another uh, God Touched, but I think Kitava Touched was the only one. It does feel like I see at least one God Touched uh, rare on every single map. On average, rather. I should say on average. And of course there are quite a few God Touched rares that are not very good. They don't offer anything special, uh, but there are, you know, three assigned to currency rewards. And, okay, and that, that was only 70 Simulacrum. That's actually a very low number of Simulacrum Splitters. Diviner's Delirium Orb is one of the better Delirium Orbs, so that'll be a nice pickup there. I thought about converting my Delirium or Orbs over and investing in that, but I decided not to do it because I think Excellence isn't really going to calculate that properly. So we've been in this map... Less than seven minutes. And map number one is done. And usually I just poured out, but I made it all the way to the beginning. Oh yeah, thank you for the community for telling me about this <laughs> tab affinity thing. Okay, and then I can actually just drop these off. Tainted currencies are going to be... Uh, a decent portion. There's just a lot of people who don't want to do Beyond. Beyond also makes the map harder, you know? It's just it's just yet another reason why you want to have a strong character is to unlock the ability to do Beyond. Go check out the prices of Exalted, of um, Tainted, Exalted Orbs, Tainted Chaos Orbs. These things are kind of rare, but, you know, when you're mapping this much, it's, they, don't, they don't end up being that rare. You'd be surprised at how valuable they are. They actually drop as red stars at this point. That's how, uh, that's how high value they are. So here we go. If you have a strong magic fight, yeah, well, I I have a little catchphrase called I am my own color. So why why not why not just be your own color? Okay, my friends. That must be what duplicated currency looks like. Ah, I didn't realize it would actually separate them. So that should drop as a, a full stack of five divines. Now I know for the first time for sure. This is the this is only the second map, by the way. Uh, this is what it looks like when you duplicate currency. I have, honest to god, I have something like 45% chance to duplicate currency because I hit the altars on that on purpose in the front end of this map. Oh, this is the this is the third map, sorry, not the second map. It's the third map. Uh, and there it is. Major hit. Making all the right moves. It's very important to get those uh, basic currency duplicates. Ironically, I, on this map, I did pass on one of those altars because I, the very first altar I spawned immediately, also had like three percent scarab drops. 
I took the scarabs instead, but then I spawned like seven more altars later and got a bunch of, of eggs. And I did find a gilded divination scarab too, so no regrets. Absolutely no regrets. Ah, that's awesome. All right, give me the give me all that stuff right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take that, take that off the ground in case the game crashes or something crazy. Uh, you can see I dropped uh, 16 exalted orbs and only uh, 10 divine orbs, which means da -da -da, I actually got unlucky with those drops. I had unlucky. lesser gear. Oh, two divine orbs. <laughs> two divine orbs. Wait, what? Ha! It's a raw divine orb drop that duplicated off of the basic <laughs> currency duplicate. Man, I'm two for two on duplicating divine orb. That's too bad it wasn't a god touch. Right? No counts. Okay. Man, I'm stretching my legs here. Lethal pride. How did I drop a lethal pride? Is that even possible? I've never seen a lethal pride drop in a map. Has anyone ever seen that? Right, fine. Harbingers are dead now. They're dead mechanics. Go to sleep. Oh, Exalt Sword. Abyss is kind of bad. It's, it's okay. It works. Uh, you have to be able to clear quickly, obviously, but it, it does work. I've seen this. Give me a major drop before. Oh! New record. 16. Let's see it. Oh, well, yeah, no wonder I new record. This is one of the highest quantity rarity rolls I've ever had on a map. That's why I run the... That's why I get the altars first. That is why you want a map that's never going to spawn an altar for a boss mod. And you want to get you all the chances you can get to get quantity and rarity and or duplicated currency. So if I had hit a duplicated currency altar, this could have been 30... 32 divine orbs. It could have been. I got quite lucky. Only four raw annul uh, orbs of annulment and ten exalted orbs. So I definitely got lucky on that conversion. Of course, I got lucky. Man. Good record breaking. There it is. That puts me back on the map. And a couple of shrine on the way back. Wow, I basically all the best altars here. A covetous shrine combined with two. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> Where did that even. Wait, was that. Did that actually pop out of the stasis in advance? Perfect time for that. God, how many wing scares? I just hit. Two big time quantity uh, quantity altars, rarity altars combined with uh, basic currencies chance to duplicate. Although that wouldn't have done anything with this. That's just a crazy number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen winged scarabs. Hmm. Yeah, pretty good numbers there. 221 uh, quantity over 171 rarity. That's pretty nice. Much better than average. I'm just happy to see some, you know. I was, I was just concerned that maybe I would just get completely screwed over and like basically see almost none. I'll be really happy if I get one more decent one in here. Uh, for the next four maps. Or, or that, you know, that that's good enough. I mean, that's actually more than 16, or no, I guess that's about 12 divines. <laughs> what? I don't even know what riveted, riveted boots are. I don't even know what those are. My luck is worse than yesterday. 
Aegisaur. I said I would probably find two Aegisaurs in this 100 map session anyway, so that's actually kind of predictable. I'm, I'm just seeing so many unique drops. It's ridiculous, so... Of course, that was an actual Arch Nemesis conversion over to low tier uniques, obviously, but just the sheer number of uniques is really crazy on this strategy. Good options there. Whoa! Cap number 41. Currency. No, that's actually very low. <laughs> That's some bad results. That that's some of the worst results I've seen, uh, given this and the test runs. The lowest, the lowest with this amount of rarity and quantity on the lowest I've ever seen is, I think, four <laughs> divine orbs. And I I'm actually sitting really nice here. I've hit two major altars. So well, I mean, I'm not complaining. I did find what is now my third currency based god touched rare, but it's. It was kind of lackluster, man. Right? Kind of sad result. That's going to happen sometime. You know, I'll go back and I check and I'll, I'll hit alt on it. It probably will happen is like a bunch of the drops got converted over into something stupid. Probably will happen. In fact, I'm just going to... Well... There it is. Explosion. Solaris touched, or Innocence touched. Here comes a crap ton of scarabs. There it is. <laughs> oh my god, look how many wing scarabs. Like, counts of three in there. Dude, that's so many. <laughs> wow, that's so many. Oh my goodness. That was a good time to get that. I got all, all the, uh, all the altars I could get. I thought it was Solaris for a second, but man, Innocence Touch comes back with an eight winged abyss scarabs. Bro, what? Four divination, three divination, two winged, three blood. God, what is. I've never seen anything like that before. Eight, a stack of eight winged abyss. Those are premium scarabs, too. Those are abyss and winged scarab. High count. Each <laughs> winged legion scarabs I might use. Yo, that's nuts. <laughs> wow, did so many drops. I, I've been kind of crapping on Innocence Touch a little bit in the back of my head, because I'm like, you know, how can it really compare to like 10 or more Divine Orb drops? It's going to give me that many winged scarabs, I guess. I guess it'll do the trick. Dang. Farming's good. I got lost. Wow, that's so weird. I saw... That's so funny. I saw Kitava... I saw that. Like, I've never seen that before. I actually saw Kitava just sitting there, not moving. I was like, what? Is that Kitava monster just not is in the stasis? But he showed up on the radar? That's so cool. He got me a soul taker, too. I paid 25 divines for my physical, um, for my quiver. I never saw another one that was even close to as good forever. So. Good for you. <gasps> wow, that's such garbage drops, man. I'm let down. I can't be seeing drops that bad. One exalt, one divine, one orb of annulment. Ugh. Solaris touch, you let me down. What else? What else did it convert to? Man, that's so bad. Oh, we got a currency touch. I see, definitely see some major drops there. At least one divine orb by the looks of it. It is seven divines. Yeah, eight exalts. All right, that, that's middle of the road right there. That's just, that's status quo. Uh, good drops for, for me is what I see. So not the best, not the worst. Middle of the road. There it is. And I've, you know, I got 
abysses, breaches, and legions flying around at once. I don't know exactly where that came from, but it's probably from a legion. I'll have to check the replay, maybe we'll know. Probably Alva in the temple would be actually better. Here we go. Legion number one. Legion number two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man, you see I got screwed actually. I actually got screwed on that. You can see the massive unique jewels tucked me over and I still dropped tons of wing scare. Even with half of them getting screwed over. I wonder what that would have looked like clean. Wow. Man. Well, I mean I kind of know what it looked like clean because I had a clean one earlier. 36 wing scarab. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. It's okay. Emblems are up in value, apparently. That's the best abyss trove, abyssal trove I've ever seen. <laughs> okay. All right. I got my two. I got my two Aegis Aurors. I said I'd probably get two in this 100 map test. I got two. Thank you, winged or uh, gilded reliquary scarab, for that wonderful addition to my unique collection. Hey, look! Breach actually works. Five exalted orbs. F you. Bad luck. I got unlucky. Only two divines. But we we that we were able to confirm with a hundred percent certainty that was breach. There it is. Oh, I was just thinking about in the back. I almost said something like. I got a funny feeling. I got a funny feeling about this Legion. 18 new record. Only 10 exalt. 18 divines, 10 exalt. Now I do have, I think I have some duplicated currency, but as, a, as mentioned earlier on in the highlight, I don't think the duplicated currency looks like this. I think it would have looked like it just straight up identical piles stacked up. Basically, the general rule of thumb is if you're running Deadeye, you're going to run Fort support. If you're running Raider or something else, probably going to be Chain support. Oh. Oh. What do you know? Two maps in a row, baby. Mega Divino. We'll catch him back up. Only... Only a humble 11 Divine Orb drop. Nothing too crazy. Oh, I still got a couple Legions to run, don't I? I did have one Altar open, and the numbers are definitely lower than last map, but it's okay. It was a Solaris touch that, as we can see. Yeah, we're catching up to 81. We'll have to see what it is after this map. I'm excited to check. Six exalts, zero divine, and that's just rude. 
I even hit that quantity altar too. So that is the first god touched uh, currency mob that I've hit. That had, didn't even drop a single divine. You can see that uh, all more than half of it got converted into gems. <laughs> wow. Well, okay. So that's that's why that happened. All right. You guys know what time it is. This is the time we check the loot and see what kind of currency per hour is earned. In this particular 100 maps farming session, again, no divination card farming going on. However, there was a scout card involved. We'll, we'll check that out. We'll see how many scout cards I got. Um, you can see my dump tab A is here. A lot of uniques in there, right? You can see dump tab T, dump tab B, rather. Uh, again, a lot of uniques. Way more uniques than usual. And these uniques are a lot more valuable this league than they were last league. I think that's one of my biggest takeaways. The Reliquary Scarab not only uh, improved the chances of conversions on the Arch Nemesis monsters, but just straight up rewarded me a lot more uniques through just raw juicing on the maps, uniques dropping everywhere. Um, I saw tons of unique leather belts, heavy belts. Suddenly, I am quite confident that at some point in this league, I am going to find a raw Mage Blood or Headhunter. I tend to find one of those every league, and I'm seeing, um, if not as many, maybe more than usual uh, with this farming strategy. Now, I may not do this farming strategy for the rest of the league, but I did enjoy it quite a bit. And there is kind of an elephant in the room that I didn't really mention at the opening of this video. I know there are some people out there who not a big fan of magic fine. I know there's some people who actually want to just kind of get rid of it altogether. I'm not going to address that criticism for this video, uh, suffice it to say, I enjoy this farm very much. I, I am someone who actually likes Magic Find. I think it has a place in this game. And, you know, we can debate about the exact balance of Arch Nemesis conversion Magic Find weighing into it. Uh, but uh, suffice it to say, yeah, I, I do like this strategy. I like the direction. I like uh, the fact that rare monsters sometimes are extremely exciting to kill for the loot they give and can be quite challenging at least up until the point where you have geared your character to the T uh, in which case you can scale back your gear and put on a bunch of magic fine gear and make it hard on yourself again and actually put yourself at more risk for more reward I like that dynamic that you that you can go about that for this farming session I do think that I it was a little bit overkill I did die, you know, a few times, but I certainly had way more clearing efficiency than I necessarily needed to have. I would have liked to have had a little bit more rarity or quantity, and moving forward, I am going to be adjusting my gear a little bit uh, to at least put a little more rarity on there. So, let's see what kind of results we had. We've got a usual setup here. Uh, let's just uh, scroll through real quick to see all the uniques. There were a huge number. I suggest I probably find something like two Aegis Auroras. Well, I did. <laughs> Found two. They were in the highlight videos. They're right there. Uh, definitely going to be counting them because they're, there's no reason not to expect to find a few big uniques in a strategy like this. Uh, next we have, I guess the next one was Ralakesh's Impatience. I think it's the first time I've ever found that. Uh, three Intuitive Leaps, two Badge of the Brotherhoods, a Garakun's Flight, three Winter Weaves, I did get a 5% Brass Dome. It's actually worth five, around 4 or 5 Divines, but uh, Excellence will only be counting that at the minimum amount, so take that into account. Some of the... Every single Unique in here, a lot of them uh, have the potential to be worth way, way more than their default value if they roll well. Brass Dome is a perfect example of this, and Excellence is not going to factor that in one bit. I also, uh, I had at least two uniques that basically had its value increased by a factor of like 40 <laughs> because it was rolled extremely well. Oh yeah, the two dust. Two dust was the other one. I, I have a 20% two dust in here as well. Uh, so just absolute metric ton of uniques. Some of these aren't really worth that much. Uh, let's take a look at the divination cards here. Oh, okay. Three wing divination scare. Looks like I got eight scouts. Two darker halves in there too. And then everything else is just kind of random. No major divination scarabs from, or no div divination cards from like divination rewards. Obviously, I did not see very many divine or strong boxes either. Um, but yeah, uh, the big daddy of them all here 83 divine orbs. 
obviously I'm a little bit let down on that because in my 32 map test I found 81. So I found I found the same number of divine orbs in a third of the maps when I did a test run. So I'm not surprised that I didn't get the similar results that I got uh, with that test run. You know, just a little let down because it, it made my expectations, shot my expectations through the roof. Uh, but it is what it is. Maybe you guys think I got really lucky even in the 100 map test. I don't really think so. Uh, I think I got lucky in the 32 map test run, but I don't really think I got all that lucky with this 100 map test. So whatever the currency per hour comes out to, I, I think it'll be a fairly accurate representation of what uh, you would get if you had my character and you were running it the same way I was running it. Uh, 580 stack decks. Well, that's going to be fun. Fun on my hands when we open those up for the gambling portion. Oh yeah, there will be a gambling portion at the very end of this video because... We are now to the point where we are doing all kinds of exciting double corruptions on gems and some uniques, some of which are here, some of which I will pull straight out of this, like I'll pull the Shavs and the Prism Guardian out and we'll just double corrupt them for gambling fun. Oh yeah, you see a bunch of emblems are here. Uh, quick reminder at the front end of the video, I mentioned that emblem sets are selling for one per 0 0.5 divine orbs so there are 18 full sets which means i'm going to be adding nine divine orbs to the final tally uh and then the rest of the emblems are just remaining here uh oh i need to My mana is gone. actually i'm glad i looked at this because i need to actually reset it before we go into the final tally so this should remove 18 of them there they go, okay. Found way fewer Templar emblems than the others, so that's gonna jerk my results down a little bit, but that's okay. 38,665 Chaos. The price pointed uh, 210 Chaos per Divine Orb. So this is how we'll start it. Right here. Okay, you can see that my gross 64.12 however we're going to add nine divine orbs for the emblems and we're going to add 15 divine orbs for the gems that i leveled and we're also going to add 2.4 divine orbs for the cluster jewels i will show you the cluster jewels so it's actually about 210 so i got there uh there were some cluster jewels i found one big one was a 84 item level 84 12 passive minion cluster jewel you know tons absolute tons of cluster jewels dropped in 100 maps uh perfectly reasonable to count this in i think uh it can be qualified as a target farm we got eight a few eight passive cold gems and a burning four passive burning gem it's like 30 chaos 20 20 to 30 chaos a piece but the big one is the minion gem here so that is where the sort of extra income came from and how long did it take? Well, I mentioned it was taking about seven minutes per map. It's actually a little bit less than that uh, as far as getting in and out of the maps with a little bit of hideout time in between, not counting, you know, any major breaks. So, 11 and a half is going to be what we, our final dividing number. Let's see if I manage to crack 20 divines an hour. The answer is going to be no. Make sure I look at that right again. Right, 22 minus 28.28 divided by 11.5. So this is actually well under what I expected. I actually thought I was going to hit close to 20 divines an hour. Um, maybe I miscalculated in that estimation at a certain point. But anyway, 15 divines an hour is pretty respectable, I think, especially for a highly RNG fight. I think I could have very easily got 20 divines an hour if I'd have gotten a little luckier. Oh, that's where this number goes. This number goes here. Alright, so that's the spread on that. Yep, okay. I am looking forward to, to evolving this farm. I'll try it with Wandering Path at a certain point. I'll probably try it on Colonnade at a certain point. Uh, I'm going to be working on my gear to get a little bit more rarity on there uh, to see what kind of uh, see if I can you know push that up a little bit. 
but that's about it for the results on there. We still got the gambling portion to get through, so I got to get all that ready. Uh, most of it is ready here. I got 15 double corruption chambers, uh, chronicles here ready to go. And you just hang tight. We'll see what the results are. Last time, I got 6 out of 12 up. We'll see how many out of 15 up I get. There are some really high stakes ones here, so I'm crossing my fingers. Hopefully you do too. <laughs> okay, so let's let's get this started here. What do you guys think? I seen this touch. Probably not, huh? I'm not gonna double corrupt the uh, Aegis Auroras. <laughs> oh, we're good now. We're good. Two out of six. Two out of six high stakes up. There it is. That's good odds. That's actually better than average. <laughs> better than average. Okay, thank you for waiting. This is the gambling portion of the video, and I did a little twist on this one. I went ahead and opened all the stack decks. I decided from here on out I think I should just open them in advance uh, to try and help condense the length of the videos. You can see there are a few good ones here. Dorian is Epiphany, a strategist, strategist rather. And the nurse card saved the day. So I think I came out fairly even thanks to that nurse card. Uh, but everything else is kind of eh. eh. That's everything there. Uh, let me bring you to my stash. Once again, I made out like a bandit. Per our usual arrangement on the double, cru double corrupting awakened exceptional support gems. There were six high stakes gems. Two up, two even, two down. And I'm, of course, very happy with those results because I came out well ahead because those are better than average results. And uh, even on top of the <laughs> Awakened Enhanced support, Gems had even better luck on those. So these really are my lucky card, <laughs> lucky star, Gems, whatever you want to call it. There they are. Five up, four the same, and three down. Just so much currency. <laughs> so much currency every time. Uh, all right. As for the double corruptions, well, at least I got a few. But and I think this shield is actually probably the best one I got. Sadly, uh, they, they this percent damage would be okay here. I don't think projectile and traps anything special here. And then I got mantra flames. It's just kind of yeah, okay, I guess. Uh, we have a shav impulsa garakan's flight. Wrath pith stayed the same. Yeah, definitely came out behind on those. I always seem to come out behind on those. I should probably just stick to double corrupting Prism Guardians, actually. Probably be a lot more likely to uh, come out ahead anyway. Well, that is basically it for this video. So, once again, this was the third edition of Perception vs. Reality, focused on God-touched rares. Having a character that is not only capable of clearing efficiently, but also... Uh, happens to be wearing a decent amount of quantity and rarity. Just as a reminder, 61% increased quantity, 259% increased rarity is what I was sporting through most of my combat. And then when you saw even 18 divine orbs drop, I wasn't wearing a thousand percent increased quantity or increased rarity or anything. It was just kind of uh, your average amount of rarity on a magic fine character, below average by some people's standards. Uh, but it was a lot of fun, and if you're someone who would like to, you know, have a somewhat return to Diablo 2-esque magic find feeling when you're playing, uh, definitely RNG heavy. Not for everybody, I understand. Uh, but at, at the very least, hopefully I was able to prove to you that there is something to this God-touched farming. There's something to be had there, even for solo players who don't want to port out and bring a caller into the map or even just switch their own gear you know it's not like I swapped my own gear uh, to put on a bunch of magic fine gear or anything well that concludes the video if you have any questions please leave a comment in the comment section 
Uh, sorry, it probably wasn't quite as entertaining as the precursor video, the highlight of <laughs> what happened in the test run. It would have been nice if I had had some insane results, but you know, that would have actually taken away from the legitimacy of the, the runs, I think. Pretty average, I suspect. I don't know for sure. I'm going to keep farming, doing things this way, so come on by to the live Twitch stream to see some God Touch farming in the future, as well as maybe in combination with Divination card farming. I've got a lot of different strategies in the back of my mind, uh, mostly shifting over towards Wandering Path, maybe getting a little bit more rarity on my gear. We'll see what happens. Uh, that's all I got for you. I will see you all in another video coming soon, no doubt.